cleanairmining.com.au and joining me today is Mike Garbett, the CEO of Clean Air Metals. Mike, it's great to see you again. How are you? I'm good. Good to see you again. Now, I'm thrilled to have you on because you have your Thunder Bay project out in Ontario, Canada, um, but you are actually looking for platinum group metals or sometimes called platinum group elements, so PGMs or PGEs. Can you please, um, before we get into sort of the use case for PGEs, can you discuss what's actually happening with your project just briefly? Yeah, so uh, our project, as you mentioned, is uh, the Thunder Bay North uh, Critical Minerals Project. It's about 50 kilometres northeast of Thunder Bay, Ontario. Um, our project has, has two different deposits, about uh, two and a half kilometers apart from each other, near surface, but certainly will be underground operations. Uh, we have about a 14 million ton indicated resource, uh, covers about, is about 2.4 million equivalent ounces of, of platinum. Uh, but so th those equivalents are made up of, of platinum palladium on a pretty much a one-to-one -one ratio, uh, but also payable amounts of copper, nickel, gold, silver, uh, essentially make up the, uh, the product mix of our, of our project. And we're early stage development, uh, we like to call it. We've done a lot of work. We have some extensive metallurgical work. And uh, we're advancing this project uh, through advanced exploration uh, with potentially a revised PEA in 2025 and uh, looking at uh, taking on a bulk sample too, to test, uh, to test uh, the metallurgy on a, on a larger scale. Now, can we just talk a bit about the supply side of uh, platinum group elements? A lot of people are familiar with some of these metals coming from Russia or South Africa, uh, but there are pockets of PGE projects all around the world, obviously yours being one of them. Tell me, do we, is it important to diversify the supply chains around uh, away from the two main sources that we currently use? Yeah, I, I think, uh, you know, the, moving away from, from the reliance on, on the supply from, from South Africa and Russia is, is certainly an opportunity for both platinum and palladium. Uh, right now, from a, a su supply perspective, you know, both market, both palladium and platinum are actually relatively small markets about, uh, you know, each, you know, I think platinum's around 6 million ounces and palladium might be nine and a half. Um, in terms of supply for platinum, it's forecasted to to gradually drop off, um, you know, to from from about six million to five million by 2030, and that's largely driven by supply challenges in South Africa, uh, related to a move from from you know platinum rich uh, deposits to palladium rich, and and their cost uh, they're they're fairly high in the cost curve. So right now, for platinum, uh, South Africa is about seventy percent of the world supply. Russia, I think, is about ten, and 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 that large, you know, a large portion of that, or most of that, it's it's part of the multi commodity deposits. So it, it's a byproduct of, of 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 nickel mining in Russia, and same in North America. You know, we do have some some fairly, uh, you know, some sub producers of 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 copper nickel that actually produce quite a bit of platinum, uh, but it is a byproduct. So it's largely driven off the price of nickel and copper. Um, so yeah, so there are they, we are seeing a drop in supply for platinum. Palladium's a little more complicated. Uh, Russia and Russia's about forty percent. South Africa about thirty five percent. Between North America and Zimbabwe is about twenty five percent. And and again, it's the same issues in South Africa. It is a cost issue, and a lot of mines are producing above the current spot price. Uh, the other part on the supply side is recycling for for uh, uh, for palladium. You know, obviously, heavy use in auto catalysts of the cars of, for for automobiles, and 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 so there's a there's a recycling opportunity, and but the the recycling business hasn't got as act in order since since uh, post COVID, and it may never get to scale again. So again, that you know people you know often uh, misunderstand the supply side and 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 see this. Uh, the recycling as an issue or and and potentially it, it may not uh, may not come to fruition as as heavy as people think it will uh, from a demand point of view what i'd like to know is is there a future for pg or platinum and palladium in particular uh, and the reason why i ask this is you know a lot of us associate palladium with the use in uh autocatalytic converters, uh, which, you know, if we're moving away from the internal combustion engine, they really wouldn't have a need in the future. So what is the future demand supply coming for platinum and palladium? Yeah, uh, you know, for us, we're, we are really excited about, about platinum in, in particular, uh, although it's still used quite a bit as an autocatalyst, probably 40% of its use. Uh, 
um, the, the we see that changing, and and we'll I'll talk I'll talk about platinum as well or palladium as well. Um, because of their unique properties, there's constantly you know people working on new uses and and exciting new uses for for both platinum and palladium. But right now, platinum about forty percent auto catalysts, a large portion about twenty five percent in jewelry, and then industrial use again for auto catalysts, uh, but in, in industrial specific about twenty five percent. But the future you the future demand, uh, you know, we I've talked a few times about the hydrogen economy and uh, green hydrogen in particular, the production through uh, electrolysis and then uh, fuel cells, uh, the hydrogen fuel cells, they're big potential users of hydrogen, but also the, the you know, ongoing work trying to figure out energy storage, uh, particularly for hydrogen. They've come up and I'll, I'll encourage people to look this up and read a little bit more about this, but the, the use of platinum in liquid or organic hydrogen carriers because hydrogen is not very dense. And so to transport, it's difficult. And so this liquid organic hydrogen carriers, uh, it's a solution to, to allow hydrogen to be stored. And, and it acts essentially as a, as a battery, works really well with, uh, with uh, renewables. And uh, so that we see that as a, as a kind of a big future for, for uh, platinum. Um, and, and demand with that, with those changes and what the known things, um, the the demand for platinum is expected to increase, uh, you know, through 2030 and 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 looking at a structural deficit uh, over that period of time. Now, palladium, yes, as you said, you know, big use is, as a uh, auto catalyst for, for internal combustion engine and, you know, been hurt by the drop in global vehicle sales. And, and as soon as you mention palladium, people think, oh, you know, it's, it's done because of the, uh, the, the, the rise in battery electric vehicles. But um, there are greater loading of, of, of palladium in, in the plug-in hybrid vehicles. And, and those are actually taking, they're growing faster than battery electric vehicles. So uh, we see it, uh, that as being the future for, for at least the use in, in light transportation. But, you know, uh, there's, there's a steady increase in, in uh, emission standards for particularly for heavy duty diesel transportation. And let's face it, not everything could be electrified or, or you can add a battery to it. So there's still a transition required there and, and platinum and palladium are, are, big, parts, are big parts of that, uh, particularly with the, uh, the change in, 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 in finding new uses for both those metals. In, in terms of a deficit, there is a deficit for palladium, probably around 400,000 ounces currently uh, you know, but its price has been hit by by short selling, and I think it was somewhere around a million ounces short uh, on the market. Um, that actually sounds like while everybody's been caught up in the idea of a bearish case on these two metals, there's actually quite a bullish case to be made. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but don't either one of these metals have a use in water purification as well? Yeah, I think you know, both actually do, and 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 the technology is evolving. But uh, the, you know, let's fit. Just overall, you know, platinum, palladium are critical to the green energy transition, and uh, and to reach our net zero goal, you know, many people are focused on electrification and battery as as the the solution. But you cannot find anyone that believes there will be enough cobalt, nickel, copper, lithium to cover you know like the the traditional battery metals to to meet those net zero goals. And as I said. Um, you know the green energy transition, or or even just uh, you know thinking about climate change. PGs are critical to that, and there is no perfect solution. So a lot of these energy transition solutions will require transition metals. Let's call it, and and you need to mix the solutions. Uh, you know both like bioenergy, renewables, hydrogen. They all require PGM cal catalysts for you know CO two, methane, CO hydrocarbons, and and as you mentioned. Uh, the use in water purification is is a is an emerging and growing use for PGM. So uh, it is it is actually a very positive future. You know, not without its challenges. Um, but you find lately in in these markets and recently, and again with the price challenges, that people are more apt to be negative as opposed to looking at the upside and, and the potential. 
Uh, it sounds like there's a really positive future ahead for these two little known metals. And as you pointed out too, they have unique chemical properties uh, that aren't found in other metals. But before we go, I believe there are some assay results coming out soon from a recent drill program. When are we going to get a look at those numbers? Yeah, so uh, yeah, we had done a small program about 1,700 metres this summer. And, and part of it was to, uh, if I could back up for a moment, was to we have some new technical people on the team led by Dr. Lionel John and uh, just looking at our high grade pods in our, in our current deposit and trying to expand those, we've seen an opportunity. So he put a small drill program together and, and, and we're seeing some great success. We did have uh, released the, the assays from the first two holes in September and we're expecting the, to release the results of the remaining assays within uh, the next few days. Well, I look forward to seeing them on and I hope you jump back on so we can talk about them then. Mike, thank you so much for being here. I certainly learned a couple of things I didn't know. Uh, it was great talking to you. Great. Always, uh, always great to talk to you.